Thank you so much. So, Mr. Chair, dear members of the Bureau of the Committee on Information, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, it is my honor as Under Secretary General for Global Communications and Head of the Department of Public Information to address this committee for the very first time. At the outset, I would like to express my appreciation to all of you for your guidance, support, and commitment to the work of the department, and to me personally since I joined the United Nations in September last year. We welcome the support we receive and look forward to our partnership continuing and deepening. I would also like the opportunity to take the opportunity in this setting to acknowledge Maher Nasser for his stewardship of the department as acting Under Secretary General for much of last year. Distinguished delegates, I have the fortune to address you at an auspicious time as the department undertakes a process of review and reform. Many of you will already be aware of this from the informal briefing I gave to committee delegates on 28th March, already mentioned by the chair. The reform has been requested by the Secretary General and is being conducted in parallel with other reform streams, including development, peace and security, and management. The department's reform process started with one question. How does and how should the organization communicate the values it upholds on behalf of all member states? We live in a world where 5G is the near future and yet a substantial digital gap persists between countries and even within countries. We live in a world where trust in major institutions is increasingly hard to maintain. And we live in a world where the public is being overwhelmed by the noise of news that is sometimes fake. Our aim, therefore, is to create rapid, strategic, and integrated communications to have in place an operation that meets the needs of today's world and ensures we can tell the UN story to people in languages they understand and via platforms they can use and access, digital as well as traditional. We recognize that we must be nimble with our resources in doing so. We live in a time when member state budgets are being stretched to deal with so many complex challenges. We must also invest in training, ensuring that our staff have the skills needed to carry out the tasks required. In addition, we need to monitor developments in emerging technologies, including the better use of artificial intelligence, so that we can keep pace with the constantly evolving field of communications. Our reform is informed by several key analyses, a new evaluation from the Office of Internal Oversight Services that reviews the department's work from 2012 to 2017, the DPI staff engagement survey, and the DPI senior staff retreat earlier this year. Ultimately, this is a staff-led and staff-driven exercise. Colleagues from across the department came together in eight working groups of 12 members each to focus on key areas where we can improve their ideas and proposals will form the basis of a broader plan that I will take to the Secretary General probably later this month. Our plans for change start, as some of you have already noted, with our name, to move from the Department of Public Information to the Department of Global Communications, in line with the title of Under Secretary General for Global Communications that the Secretary General gave me. This is much more than a cosmetic change. It is a signal of the direction in which we are heading. There will, of course, be many steps ahead, and I will keep you informed as we proceed. Mr. Chair, even as we move towards more modern communications, the department is already innovating in terms of its products as well as its structure. As I hope you will all see during the interactive segment scheduled for this afternoon, we are finding new ways to work, smarter ways to partner, and more effective ways to make an impact. 
One example is the new integrated UN news portal, launched late last year. It, offer, it offers not only the latest news and features in one user-friendly website, but more than 400,000 historical radio, photo, and print legacy items, enhancing the intellectual and historical value of the site. Along with the UN news site has come the updated United Nations News Reader smartphone app on which you can find all UN-related news in the six official languages, as well as Kiswahili and Portuguese. I would invite all of you to download the app. The department is also updating and modernizing its core platforms. The digital asset management system for audio and video content, and new systems for photo management and archiving, and for webcast live streaming. We are creating better stories and packaging our multimedia materials to be socially optimized, using digital tools ranging from podcasts to newer media for immersive storytelling and mobile access, as well as continuing to provide rich content for traditional media. In recognition of the ways in which people are now consuming information, we have begun exploring virtual reality films offering 360 degree experiences with the first such film to be available later this month. In the eight months since the centrally coordinated multilingual social media team was established, the number of followers on the main global platforms in the eight languages has increased by 2 million to 31 million. This rise reflects improvements in all languages. Engagement on our posts is also increasing thanks in part to the outstanding performance of the live videos and posts from the UN General Assembly VIP social media space in September 2017, which received support from major social media platforms. The flagship website UN.org continues to grow in terms of reach and engagement. We will soon embark on a project to review and refresh the homepage and associated web pages that will include in-depth analysis of audience behavior on the site across all languages to attract even wider audiences. As we move ahead, we are also continuing to digitize the United Nations historical and audiovisual records to preserve and protect our common legacy. Mr. Chair. Notre réseau de 59 centres d'information. Our network of 39 centers of the United Nations promotes the activities of the United Nations in more than 80 local languages. And thus, in every region of the world, it spreads efforts for global communication between the department and the public. My goal is to strengthen the contributions of these languages to all of the work of the department, which will lead to greater impact and make our work more multilingual and more effective. This requires that the information centers be fully integrated into the strategic planning to the development of digital and multilingual content to the analysis of the audience and awareness raising amongst the youth. In the case of broader reform within the department, we are undertaking an operational assessment of each of our bureaus abroad so as to ensure that they respond to strategic communication needs, those of the organization. At the same time, the department is discussing with the Office of the Secretary Generally of how the changes within the development system will affect information centers and our efforts for global communication. We wish to ensure that the centers are fully equipped to support the reforms of the development system and to strengthen coherence throughout the United Nations system, in particular regarding Agenda 2030. We must ensure that the centers continue to promote 
the broadest programs of the United Nations as mandated by the member states, including issues of peace and security, of humanitarian assistance, and the promotion of human rights. Continuing with our successful digital campaign, Service and Sacrifice, which honors the engagement of troop and police contributing countries to the United Nations peace operations, focusing on a different member state every week. The campaign is an example of emotional and behind the scenes storytelling about a, a unique UN endeavor that is resonating positively with local populations and governments and building support for the organization's mission. Our participatory Add Your Voice video project is part of the campaign to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and to better connect ordinary citizens and individuals with the promotion of their rights. More than 3,000 people around the world speaking in 70 different languages have recorded videos of themselves reading out an article of the Universal Declaration. A special edition of the Declaration, branded for the landmark anniversary, has also been produced in all six official languages. Mr. Chair, Due to the upcoming difficult issues on international peace and security, we need to note that the department will ensure informational support to the first high-level conference in history with the participation of counterterrorism agencies from UN member states, which will take place in June. It also, the preparation process and holding of a planned event in December, namely the Marrakesh Conference, which will focus on the Global pa Compact for Migration. This is also the first such agreement. The evaluation of the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals will be a central item in the agenda for the high-level political forum, which will take place in July. The department is seeking new approaches which will raise attention within the community and for individuals to work harder to achieve these goals. The department is also actively working to promote the agenda on climate change, which is crucial. This work is taking place over a year and a half beginning after the 24th session of the COP on climate change, which will take place in the Polish city of Katowice in December, and will end with the UN Summit on Climate Change, which is planned for September of 2019. Delegates, our outreach is expanding in many ways. The UN Digital Library, a partnership between UN libraries in Geneva, Beirut, and Vienna, continues to grow. In its first five months, there were more than 1.1 million downloads of content to users. More broadly, the Dag Hammarskjöld Library is undertaking a process to improve the ways in which it collects, preserves, organizes, and shares UN materials with clients. Earlier this year, the department marked the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade with a number of activities. We are grateful to permanent missions and representatives for their active engagement and support. Our focus on SDG awareness is increasingly on engaging young people, which must, as you noted, Mr. Chair, be a priority for all of us. As showcased during the 19th Festival of Youth and Students in Sochi, Russia, last October, and a multi-country mission to Africa at the beginning of this year, 
The Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, whose office is part of the department, has been able to mobilize young people on and offline to advocate for and engage in the implementation of the goals and embrace the values on which the UN was founded. If we are to succeed across Agenda 2030, young people must be informed and engaged and working with us at every stage. The Office of the Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, which is entirely funded by extra budgetary means, requires more support from all sources. More generally, the department, mindful of the budgetary situation facing member states, is exploring creative avenues for fundraising to ensure that we can meet all of our mandates, mandates particularly those regarding multilingualism. As part of the UN's ongoing campaign to promote the SDGs, the UN Academic Impact, UNAI, in the acronym so beloved in this building, this initiative launched today a series of articles highlighting the importance of higher education in achieving the goals. This series, which will focus on a different goal each week, aims to inspire action about the SDGs and to showcase what UNAI member institutions are doing to help achieve them. Looking ahead, we can announce that the 67th DPI NGO conference will be held at UN headquarters on 22nd, 23rd August. The conference agenda is being finalized and will be shared later this month. Bringing in the voices and diversity of civil society and youth in the work of the UN as advocates and change agents is a key priority of the department. Distinguished delegates, I very much look forward to hearing your views, observations, and comments this week, as well as your guidance and support in the year ahead. I welcome specifically your ensuring that your support in this committee for the Department of Public Information is equally expressed in the fifth committee, that you provide us with mandates that allow us the flexibility to build support for the United Nations in line with modern communications and on the basis of research and analytics, and that you continue to work creatively and share best practices with us for the greatest impact. I do hope you will be able to join us this afternoon for an interactive dialogue as we discuss our partnership further. I also look forward to seeing you on Thursday when we gather here to mark World Press Freedom Day a cause dear to my heart as an ex-journalist of 40 years standing. Indeed, just yesterday, nine journalists were among those killed in a targeted attack in Kabul, Afghanistan, and a 10th journalist was murdered outside the Afghan capital. This illustrates the grave dangers that journalists and media workers face every day around the world, and it will behoove us accompanied actually by a video of the Secretary General to mark this on Thursday. Meanwhile, I hope we will all have a very enjoyable few days of fruitful exchange, and I thank you very much, both for your support and for hearing me out now. Thank you. <laughs>